counterclaims surround reports that a group of anti-Putin saboteurs have crossed the Ukrainian border to launch attacks on Russian soil. Kyiv denies any involvement. President Zelensky's government is said to be watching the events with interest, but ultimately washing their hands of responsibility. Nonetheless, the supposed operation does suggest a significant overspill from the focal point of recent fighting. For months, it has centred on the southeast of Ukraine, particularly, of course, around the town of Bakhmut in the Donbass region. But now, Russian officials allege that a group of Ukrainians crossed the border and attacked the neighbouring region of Belgorod. The local governor says the militia attacked Grai Vronovsky, where he says Russian forces are now searching for the group. A daring raid across the Russian border by soldiers who call themselves freedom fighters and the Kremlin decries as Ukrainian saboteurs. A day of startling images, many hard to verify, but it seems they have succeeded in taking the war into Russia itself. This smoke is from a Russian helicopter, which is reported to have crashed. Responsibility is claimed by an organization calling itself the Liberty of Russia Legion. We are returning home to end the Kremlin's dictatorship, they said. We want our children to grow up in peace. They posted these pictures, said to show their attack on a Russian border post. In another, two of their fighters boasted of stealing this Russian armoured vehicle. Ukraine denies any links with the group. They are citizens of the Russian Federation. They declare their own political and civil position, like those who fight Putin's regime. But in Moscow, state television said President Putin had been informed of an attempt by Ukrainian saboteurs to break into Russian territory. Belgorod's governor said the armed forces and local law enforcement agencies had been deployed. He implored citizens not to panic. Yet there were queues to leave the city, scenes reminiscent of the first days of the war in Kyiv. In return for Western weapons, President Zelensky has repeatedly promised not to use them on Russian territory. Ukraine's allies may well be nervous about today's incursion by a mysterious group of pro-Ukrainian Russians. It is tempting to see all this as part of a deliberate diversion designed to disorientate Russia ahead of a full-scale Ukrainian counter-offensive. At the very least, it has consumed the Kremlin's attention and tied up a few troops. John Ray, News at 10, Eastern Ukraine. После интенсивных артиллерийских обстрелов международного пункта пропуска Казинка, а также ряда других гражданских объектов Грайворонского района Белгородской области, подразделение украинского националистического формирования вторглось на территорию Российской Федерации. В ходе контур... Та дезинформация, которую российские источники распространяют про 39 погибших, взятых в плен и так далее, это все не соответствует действительности. Такой информации на данный момент нет. Это первые шаги именно к главной задаче, к свержению путинского режима вооруженным путем, потому что других вариантов просто нет. Тут не столько обращение к Кремлю, к Путину у нас только одно обращение. Подписывайте капитуляцию и сдавайтесь, и тогда у вас будет комфортная камера в ГААКском суде. 
Скорее наше обращение к российскому народу, что смотрите, появилась новая сила, которая там не с шариками, ленточками, а с оружием в руках готова бороться за права российского народа. These heavily armed fighters posed for reporters at an undisclosed location in northern Ukraine, close to the border with Russia on Wednesday. They claim to be members of a paramilitary group made up of Russians opposed to their country's invasion of Ukraine, who earlier this week launched a brazen two-day incursion and raid on the Russian city of Belgorod. Denis Kapustin, a Russian national who claims to command what he calls the Russian Volunteer Corps, boasted to the press that more cross-border raids were in the works, saying, quote, just a couple of days to see us again on that side. Yesterday, his group released this video showing fighters on an armored vehicle driving past a border crossing. This footage obtained by Reuters shows a fighter place an RVC sticker on a Russian personnel carrier. Russia has said the attackers, which it called terrorists, had been, quote, crushed. Russian media aired images of what it said were the invaders' vehicles, claiming they were American-made. Russia's defense ministry said 70 invaders were killed and the rest driven back to Ukraine. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu promised on Wednesday that Moscow would respond to any more cross-border raids by Ukrainian militants swiftly and, quote, extremely harshly. Ukraine's government denied any role in the raid. Asked what kind of support he got from Kiev, Kapustin said, Medicine, petrol, uh, obviously a lot of encouragement. He said two members of his group had been killed and ten wounded, uh, then pointed to what he called the main trophy, a Russian military vehicle, he said his... captured. Well, the two-day operation might have done little to damage the Russian military, analysts said the incursion could force Moscow to reallocate forces ahead of an expected Ukrainian counteroffensive. First of all, it shows that the Russian border is undefended and of this, of course, will cause Russia to divert troops away from the defensive lines elsewhere in Ukraine to try to reinforce that border, to try to prevent anything like this happening again. Kier Giles is with the Russia and Eurasia program at Chatham House. He said the assault also had a psychological element. It's part of a pattern of events that show that Russia is not invincible. And Ukraine can, in fact, deliver damage to Russia itself. If we think back to, for example, the drone attacks on the Kremlin, exploding uh, small explosive devices on top of one of the iconic buildings for Russian statehood. All of it undermines this narrative that the war will not touch Russia itself. Russia has blamed Ukraine for attacks inside Russia or Russian-held territory in recent months, many of them on fuel depots in Russian-occupied Crimea, which Moscow calls sabotage. On Wednesday, Moscow claimed to have foiled an attack on one of its warships by three uncrewed Ukrainian speedboats in the Black Sea. This week's operation in Belgorod would be Ukraine's largest such incursion known so far. Мы хотим, чтобы наши дети росли в мире и были свободными людьми, чтобы они могли путешествовать, учиться и просто были счастливы в свободной стране. Но этому нет места в современной путинской России. Такие же россияне, как и вы. Мы такие же люди, как и вы. Мы хотим, чтобы наши дети росли в мире и были свободными людьми, чтобы они могли путешествовать, учиться и просто были счастливы в свободной стране. Но этому нет места в современной путинской России, прогнившей насквозь от коррупции, вранья, цензуры, ограничений свобод и репрессий. В той России, где жизнь человека значит меньше, чем кошелек чиновника. В той России 
где прокладывают отдельную железную дорогу в резиденцию бункерного деда, вместо того, чтобы отремонтировать дороги в регионах. В диктаторской стране, где за призывы к миру детей разлучают с родителями, а подросткам дают пожизненные сроки. Но диктатуре Кремля пришло время положить конец. Спасибо всем тем, кто поддерживает нас, кто отправляет там донаты и курит там, где надо. Ваша поддержка – это то, что каждый день напоминает нам о нашей финальной цели на Красной площади. Будьте смелыми и не бойтесь, потому что мы возвращаемся домой. Россия будет свободной.